Hey guys, it is Brooke. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm taking you down to the basement. My daughter is getting ready to have some friends over for the weekend for school and then the next weekend is her birthday and I'm getting ready to have a sale on May 7th on Facebook, a pop-up live sale. You'll need to join us. But there's nothing more motivating than having people over to your house to paint, clean, organize, rearrange furniture, get all those things on your to-do list done. So we've been in the house about nine months and this was the push, the motivation that I needed to get started tackling the basement. So this will be part one. Make sure you click subscribe and ring that bell so you'll get notified when part two comes out. Let's go. Okay, one of the things I've been working on is this cabinet and we got all the drawers down here. I am missing a few drawers, so I put books in those little slots. And I used to have a bunch of books on the top. And the reason being because this cabinet was a hardware cabinet. It's actually been cut down at some point. And you can tell that by how these boards are. It has boards added and some pegboard added so the drawers wouldn't push all the way through. And so I'd stack books there basically to just disguise that. The rest of this looks fine. This board was in my shipping room um, with boxes on it actually. And so we brought it with us um, and I was just trying to look for a board for the laundry room actually. And I found this one. But I mean, this thing, the coloring is about perfect and the size is about perfect. So the length, I have not cut it or done anything. It was like meant to be. It is a little bit longer here in the back, but it fits well because of the boards and the pegboard. I kept it off the wall a little bit so I can actually use the plugins because there's two plugins back here. But I am super excited that it all worked out. No cutting, nothing needed and now I can decorate. So here is a view of the basement back when we moved in in July and originally I had planned on having my desk like this with the hardware cabinet behind it. That would be my office. When I go live I would have a pretty backdrop but then I didn't have a place for my printer. So I brought in the green shelf to put the printer on and more decor that I'm selling and then it just felt cramped in there. And so I was trying to figure out how could I rearrange, still keep my office over in this corner, but make better use of the space, make it look better. So I ended up moving the hardware cabinet to this longer wall, turned the table or my desk so that again, I had a nice backdrop. It just fit the space a little bit better. And I knew all of this was temporary because when my son moves out, he's a sophomore in college now, but he will be moving out for his junior year, I knew I would move my office up there. I also had the storage room where I could make that into an office. One of the biggest things that I'm going to have to tackle is just painting. I call this camel color. Um, it's very similar to what was upstairs, and I am either going to paint that ombre gray, at least on some feature walls, maybe a whole little section, and then I need to pick what white I wanna use. So I kinda need to pick which walls I'm gonna paint which color, and Sherwin-Williams has a sale on that ends today. I did buy another gallon of ombre gray because I know I'm gonna use it somewhere, but I'm probably gonna wait until the next sale because I just don't feel ready to make a commitment on what color and how much I'm gonna need for down here. So when you come down the stairs, you're looking at this spot and this is normally where I do a lot of staging. So this stuff is going to be available Wednesday for my Wednesday junk parlor market. If we go to the left, we're seeing just kind of the TV area. So they had a mount and everything high um, for the TV to be on this wall, but I'm going to actually move the wall, the TV to this wall. And I'd really like to get a sectional, and then I'm gonna have 
part of the sectional right here facing the TV. And then I'm going to put this table that I just picked up and I shared in my YouTube video um, behind it like a sofa table. And then this drop up can fold up and you can eat around it to watch TV. So that's kind of what I'm thinking over here. I'm going to take this long hardware piece and put it under the uh, TV over here on this wall. The table will stay here, but I'm not really sure what else I'm going to do in this space. Um, it's one of those things that will kind of depend once the room gets painted and I kind of have a feeling. This is the lighting that we originally had in here. They are LED, but they're like, I don't remember what color. Go over to this side, same wall color, same amount of lights but these are the daylight LED bulbs and it makes a huge, huge difference. So here's the little kitchenette. We did get the bulbs switched out in there. Okay, so I just swapped out the light bulbs and I'm telling you, the daylight bulbs make it look like a different space. I automatically feel happier. It's like getting some vitamin D, even though I'm not outside. And it really changes the look of the paint color. As you're seeing this, you might be like, why is the furniture arranged like this? And basically it's because I think I already walked you through my game plan on how I wanted to move the TV to a different location. We've been here since July. It is the beginning of April, however long that is. So before we had everything facing the TV, um, I shared the furniture arrangement when I was talking about this new table that we ha got and I still haven't cut the dowel rod and put the other um, leg in for a drop leaf. But my game plan on that is then you can pop the table up and we can put chairs around it and you can watch TV. So it will help have more seating um, when we have more people here. This stuff is just stuff I'm laying out for some Instagram sales. And so then, you know, this will be your focal point with the TV and then going back here is the storage room, basically my shipping area, my workshop. This rack sold, I need to get it um, packed up. And then I have these architectural salvage pieces. Here is what happens when you put polyurethane on white. It's going to yellow eventually. So I sealed these originally. And then we came back and tried to sand um, that chippy paint. Well, we tried to sand the yellow off, but what happens when you're sanding the yellow off is that you are automatically getting rid of all those layers of paint, which is a bummer, but at least now it's not yellow. So when I hang those on the wall, I haven't decided where to put those here in this new house. This weekend, the game plan is to at least paint this main wall where the TV is going to go. That way, when I move my hardware cabinet, it I don't have to move it again. So I, I'll paint, then I'll move it, and then I'll worry about painting the rest of the walls. My back has been super sensitive. I mean, I know I'm young. <laughs> I'm 44. I'll be 45 at the end of the month, so who knows when this video will come out, but... Um, I have really bad arthritis in my back and just painting the mudroom, um, messing with the washer and dryer and the laundry room, my back gets pissed off at me so easily. So I'm going to try and tackle as much as I can in one day because I might be, you know, not able to paint the next few days after that. So I want to kind of get the biggest bang for my buck because probably whether I paint for an hour or eight hours, it's going to feel the same. And then when my back feels better again, then I can start the process all over again and tackle a few more walls. So I still haven't really decided. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a light color here. I'm either going to do the... Um, 
shoot, now I'm drawing a blank on what we painted upstairs. It's Sherwin Williams. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in here when I'm editing or I'm going to paint it white and then, or I'm going to paint it the ombre gray. But then I think this wall, I'm going to have to patch the holes where the TV is and the outlets are obviously going to be high, but I figure I'll cover them with artwork or something. And so I think I'm going to do that wall in the Omberg gray, like I have in my stairway. And I think this wall I'm going to paint in the Omberg gray. Now, don't pay too much attention to this corner. This is just kind of my work corner. So I have a coaching group staging your antique shop. And so it's good for me just to have a lot of junk everywhere so that I can um, pretend this is a booth and decorate for them for my staging lessons. And then, you know, I normally have a nice backdrop when we are doing non-staging lessons so it's kind of a hodgepodge it's one of those things that looks good from one vantage point but when you put it all together it doesn't look good we're in the storage room now these really long skis i think i would like to hang those in the basement and kind of do like a cabin feel or a lodge feel and then use those snowshoes up there as well and hang those and then really go with a neutral palette. Have just like some cabiny things in here, but again, to be determined. Then I just wanna show you, things are kind of a mess down here because I am getting all of these things priced and ready to go for my May 7th Facebook sale. Got things everywhere. It's gonna be a huge sale and I'm just gonna go until I've shared about everything that I have. I will link my paint choices down in the description, but the baseboards are cream by Sherwin-Williams and that's what they were when we moved in. And then this wall color is the same color that I put upstairs. It's Edgecomb Gray by Benjamin Moore. And used to, I would always use an angled brush, maybe like a two, two and a half inch one to cut in. But I've been painting a lot here in this new house and I have just taken this little maybe one inch straight across artist brush. And I've been using that to cut in and then I will come back with my angled brush that I used to use to cut in and just fill it in a little bit more. That way the roller doesn't have to go quite as close to the trim as it would if I just used the artist brush. This hardware cabinet has been with me for quite a few years and I have moved it a lot. It was in our living room at the old house. Then we moved it to the master bedroom. I had it on one wall down here in the basement. Then we moved it to this wall. Now I'm going to move it to another wall. So I know that this thing is heavy and you want to take all the drawers out and all of the books out just to lighten it up a little bit. I have packed these open drawers, like where there's no drawer, it's just an open space. I have packed these a million times. And so I know that it just is gonna go quicker if I just keep the books in the same placement. So I'm taking them out and then I'm setting them on the floor in the same configuration. So it'll go a lot quicker to put them back. All of the drawers have already been numbered by the previous owner, so those are really easy to put back in a spot. The one thing that I have done is because some of the drawers are missing, I am strategically leaving certain spots open just so it looks more uniform where I put the books. So that is one adjustment that I have made. Furniture slides work great for something like this, but even then it's still heavy. I by no means am a weak 40 year old um, as I will show you my muscles if you haven't seen them before. But when you are trying to slide something that is crazy heavy across the carpet, 
your feet are sliding. So if I can ever wedge myself against a wall, I want to do that. I am kind of cautious about that as well because I don't want to put a hole in the drywall, which you can definitely do with your foot or your butt if you are trying to wedge yourself to push something. For me, painting is like the perfect time to do some deep cleaning as well. So I always dust the baseboards and vacuum. Funny story about this vacuum. My kids absolutely hate this vacuum. However, it costs thousands of dollars and we set through literally like a three hour, I don't even know what you call it, salesman speech. They came to our house. Kellen was probably less than a year old and these people would not leave our house. So finally, Matt and I just bought the damn <laughs> TriStar vacuum because we could not get them to leave. It's been with us for over 20 years now, so it does work and it was a good purchase, but my kids do not like the vacuum. And did you know you are supposed to vacuum the same spot like seven or eight times? Crazy. Luckily, I realized I needed to put the outlet covers back on before I had the cabinet in place. So originally this cabinet sat on the ground. I did add feet to it when we were in Centerville because there was a vent underneath where I had it. It does need some kind of support, so it is stable, but I do put a two by four and a one inch board and wedge them in the center just so it doesn't sag. Thank goodness all the new TVs are so light and thank goodness that we saved a stand from the old house because I just thought the stand puts it lower and it hurts your neck less looking up and I'm not putting any holes in the wall. So first try, I screwed the little attachments onto the back of the TV too low, even though I thought I measured, but the second time we got it. I was slightly worried it was going to fall off, but we're good. <sighs> okay, so obviously I got good progress done today. I got this wall painted. I got the cabinet moved over. I got the TV taken off the wall and put on an old stand that we had. Everything's plugged in so kids can play their games and watch TV. I am not sure though. I'm pointed, headed up the stairs. So this blank wall is what you see when you come down the stairs. Not really sure what to do. I'm pretty sure I'm going to paint this wall the ombre gray that I have in my stairway. I'm pretty sure I'm going to leave this cabinet here. I am leaving the furniture the same, although eventually I might get a bigger coffee table. If, when I find one, cheap, thrifting, etc., etc. And then over here has been my little office work area. I've rearranged in the storage room, which I need to add some clips um, so you can see that. But the table pretty much goes better long ways. Um, if you go the opposite direction, there's only like a couple feet on each side, if that. And you want at least three feet typically. But I was thinking about this wall painting the ombre gray color. But then I don't know where I'd put this green cabinet because to have normal people chairs, 
and to be able to walk. I really can't have furniture on the sides. But if I paint that wall ombre gray, then the green, I don't, I won't like it together. So maybe I'll put the green rolly cart in the storage room for now. And then when Kellen moves out and we rearrange upstairs, maybe it could go upstairs. I'm at like a standstill and that's probably why I only painted the one wall is because I knew what I wanted on that wall. So to be determined. When you come down the stairs, is that too much long cabinet on a long wall? Pretend two seater option. And here is the three seater. It doesn't have to be a, a accordion rack above it. That's just kind of in my mind what I was thinking. So here's a little update. I've got the edge comb gray done for now at least because the one wall I will wait probably until after my May 7th sale. I've decided the two walls that are the camel color, those are going to be ombre gray. Here is the current situation. It's Sunday morning. We were at football yesterday, so I got up early and started painting the ombre gray today. So that's what's happening over here on this wall. I pretty much got the rest of the edge comb gray done Friday. So I did put painter's tape here because upstairs where I did the ombre gray, um, nothing I did got me even close to a straight line. And on the mud room, I taped it and it worked really, really well. But you can see, especially on this corner, there is a lot of bleed through. So I'm gonna have to go back over that with the edge comb gray. This ombre gray, I decided at the last minute that I was gonna go ahead and paint the outlets so that they blend into the wall. I did already do the cable. So those are gonna need some more coats and I'm gonna have to do the covers as well. So you can see I just kinda held on to one corner painted. So I'll do that a few more times, but I haven't put the paint or anything away cause I wanna see how it looks when it actually dries. Come on over to this side of the room. I obviously need to get this stuff down so that I can paint this wall, but I also need to take the TV down and then really these upper cabinets, I wanna take down and do open shelving. Not my style on the uh, counters. It's hard to kind of see because they're full of crap, but um, I don't want to invest any money in changing those things out. I really don't like the layout of this little kitchenette, 
but I'm just gonna take those down so I can put some open shelving and I think I'll like it a lot more. Down the hallway, I they did kind of trim it out here. I don't know if they were thinking you could put a door. So I kind of stopped the edge comb gray there. And then I will show you, I'm a little bit concerned. That light really did nothing. Um, I did a couple of coats here already and you can see it's kind of um, pulling away. And my experience with painting is when it does that, that they use some non-paintable caulking for this countertop, which is stupid in today's day and age when they make everything paintable. So hopefully I can get that to adhere um, a little bit better, but I just kind of faded it out, feathered it out so that when we take these down and I paint, um, that it's not, you know, like a hard paint line that you can see where I stopped. So this might, be you know a couple weeks out i'm gonna try and get everything picked up um, and organized before i work on that wall all right this spot right here is the main reason that i'm doing a third coat so i probably missed it but i just decided that while I'm painting, might as well do three coats. I put the outlet covers back on so then I can hit them um, easily as well. So, almost done. Okay, so the third coat is drying and I think what I wanna try is to slide this cabinet over to here. I just want to see what it looks like. Uh, I think that it would break up the wall when I will mainly take this pathway, but would have a nice cabinet to look at. Just kind of would break up all of this wall space because I don't really have a strong vision on what I want to hang, but I think it definitely needed three coats. Okay, I think it's a winner. Um, I think it just fits the space perfectly. Still, I'm going to need to find some side tables for that spot and here and possibly over there as well. And then I just temporarily moved my peacock feathers where the shelf used to be and then the chair. I'm wanting to have chairs here somewhere close, just so when we pop up the sofa table and people are eating, there needs to be chairs close by. So here is the state of the storage room. It is ginormous in here, honestly. They had already built these tote holders, big shelves, and then over here, I put the green shelf that I had out in the basement. There is tons of scrap carpet that they left. I moved my two-seater back here, and then I've rearranged in here. Before, I had two of my metal wire racks um, here, and what happened was I bought this folding table, which I shared, it's a 10 footer and I just went ahead and made it my desk. And I had this cubby sitting on one of those metal uh, racks and I moved it here just to store stuff. You can see that I have a ton to organize. A lot of this stuff was in the hardware cabinet that I'm using as my TV stand. And I just decided I'm gonna put all that crap in here and leave those drawers empty. And then I did have a rack here and one of the racks back here, this corner, I guess, was one that had all of my website stuff. And now I have moved my website stuff to this rack for the most part. These are things that I'm holding for people. And then just my shipping uh, area here with extra boxes. And I have all my packing stuff underneath. 
So this is on wheels. So when we need to get to the furnace or hot water heater for some reason, we can. This tote just has one thing in it that needs clean. But otherwise, back in this closet under the stairs, I have all of my empty totes. I have a million rugs right here that I didn't sell before I moved. And then over here is mainly seasonal stuff for the junk parlor. I have stuff up here that Kellen's going to want to take with him um, when he goes back to living on his own. This is our makeshift guest bedroom, and I have not changed the sheets since my parents were here. And then this is just more inventory on this rack. When my parents were here, I did send back two racks, and I have another rack in the garage that I'm going to send back especially now that I have the green back here. Here's like keepsake stuff and Christmas and more boxes. So that is what the basement is currently looking like or the storage room is currently looking like. And I'm not gonna lie, I absolutely love it. The two shelves here, even though I got those awesome lights which I've shared and I'll tag here um, in the description, with the racks there and me having stuff going to the ceiling, it just really blocked off the light. And so it was really dark back here. Now when I go live, I have uh, this light, which these are awesome too. I'll tag, this is like plastic, I guess, but it's LED. So I just like carry those around like a flashlight sometimes. And then I have two over here. Well, actually I have two hanging because you can attach them to each other. And then I have one down here low, just so it's really bright back here and I can see what I'm doing. Thanks so much for watching my start of a basement refresh in the new house. Make sure you click subscribe, ring that bell so you can get notified when part two comes out. Okay, see you next time.